Hey guys, welcome to the Best Damn Comic Show, and today we're going to talk about why DC having three distributors is a bad thing. Had a couple comments about our DC uh, episode from a couple weeks ago where people were like, why is having three different distributors a bad thing? So I was having this discussion earlier okay. with, with, the, with one of the publishers that I know. There's no need to. When your numbers are this slow, there's no need to pour more than one. It creates chaos. You can go back to the 80s where those numbers were strong. There were three different distributors. And the need was for three because the numbers were huge. The and one, was The so volume high. was high that one distributor could not handle that kind of volume. But what it did create was another problem. That flaw of dealers screwing each other, screwing the different distributor, it created a point where money was not there right those guys went out of business diamond came in and made a better offer and they they took over the market and they were doing fine um, but now again the numbers are so low on my opinion i i don't need more more than one distributor what do they do everybody's gonna get what five books and distribute like you three guys gonna distribute a title that maybe sells five books ten thousand units everybody right. gets, again you got damage shortages it's gonna create a, a headache right and that's the headache midtown and lunar i have them right now because of the inexperience to deal with such high volume. Well, they don't have the manpower, especially with with everything that's going on. Midtown's in New York, and I say I bring up Midtown in New York because they're shut down. Yeah, they're just completely shut down. They've, they've been hit harder than anybody else. Anybody else with this right now? So, and like you're gonna bring in guys to pay them, you know, twelve dollars an hour to go and, and sort comics for you. The comments that we had, and we'll throw them up on the screen if we haven't done so already. We recorded the video on April twenty third. And we released it, you know, 10 days later. And within those 10 days... A lot happened. Yeah, the tune changed from, oh, we're pulling out of Diamond to, oh, we're still going uh, to distribute through Diamond. And we're going to have these other two guys. And I read that as, you got so much heat from saying that you're done with Diamond that you realize, okay, you know, this is a stupid idea. But, you, but they're saving, you're saving face by keeping on Lunar... And, and Midtown. Look, you are forcing the industry to become their competitor's client. Yeah. At that point, I am no different than the guy that complained about why is it so difficult to have three distributors. You're buying books from Midtown. They're giving you a better discount because of the volume they have. Yeah. Why would you buy from me? You, I'm, I'm becoming you at this point. If you look at the numbers, if you look at DC's numbers... They're not doing great. If I have a store and DC's not doing that great, and I'm stuck with a bunch of back issues from EC that nobody wants, why would I like inconvenience myself by going through my of computer course. to pick I up mean, more books? You know. There's a very strong, strong, strong chance that G5 is not going to happen, given the situation, how how bad their numbers are. They're not going to go through. And you know, thank God. You know, right. again, the 52 fiasco. I mean, come on, guys. Then you fix it with report, then you screw it up again. Who are you trying to keep <laughs> as a customer? Who? Who are you trying to gain as a customer? So I'm not ragging on DC. I love DC. I love all comics. I just the practices sometimes, the mentality is just like, what are you guys thinking? It's just a continuing gimmick, one after the other. Like even How? the hottest new DC book right now is Punchline First Appearance, right? It was a gimmick. Hey, Joker's got a new girlfriend. Didn't tell any of any of the stores. So it was under ordered, driving up like this. It's this false heat on this book, and we don't know. I mean, how, well, watch out for it. Watch how out many for panels the, has she been in? By, uh, you know, by now. I don't know, but watch out for that Joker, uh, the Joker special that's coming out. When it comes to toys, we see that you know your WalMarts and your Targets. Obviously, they're huge markets. They're huge volume, so they're going to get preference from Hasbro and Mattel over your your brick and mortar shop. Do you think something like that would happen here as well because of that? Well, like you, people get you a have, preference so, because of volume. So what it is is we have two markets. We have the direct market, which is me. Yeah. And we have mass market, which is everybody else. The comic book industry used to have a mass market. Right. Newsstand. But it died. Right. Toys versus comics are different things. I mean, there's a lot more kids will play with the toy than they'll read a comic. Yeah. And due to the lack of of advertising and constant exposure of this product to the mass market it just shrunk right nobody knows i mean yeah. I, I got people coming in the store going oh my god they still print comics i'm like oh my god i like pull up <laughs> oh one of those the toy market's always been a mass market industry okay with the x-men cartoon with the uh saban 
having the Marvel cartoons with Toy Biz coming in. You had the original 70s, what, Secret Wars and Superpowers. Yeah. I mean, G.I. Yeah, Joe, but superhero stuff, it was just that, then it disappeared and it came back strong in the 90s with the Saban properties. Right. And I mean, I remember people going crazy for these toys. It was so huge that the mass market, they looked at the direct market and said, oh my God, there's another avenue. So we start carrying these toys. There are toys that are specifically available for the direct market, but these are the high ticket items. Yeah. You know, an $80 toy is not going to freaking sell at Target. Yeah, your Mezco, your hot toys, you know, your side I mean, show. Side, yeah. All that stuff. And so statues and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so, so, so you, you've been able to create a niche a, a niche for this toy market for the collective art through us through the direct yeah. market but when you're talking marvel legends you know hasbro no they've been at this game mass market game it doesn't affect you know what i right, mean it's, right. it's not gonna affect yeah because the mass market is so much higher than the direct market yeah. when it comes to distribution that, right i mean the only problem is is like okay there's sets that i've ordered through diamond and they're not they're sitting in the warehouse right the rest of the market's got them if you can find them yeah so by the time I, you get so by them, the time I get everyone's them, already got them or like but the heat on either, them no way that they got them or they're still looking for them which I still think they're still looking for yeah. them you know what I mean so I shouldn't have a problem moving the Space Ghost Rider the Black Widow the Fantastic Four yeah, yeah everything that I have on order you know Squirrel Absolutely. all these things I don't think I'm gonna have an issue moving them it's just again you have to understand what you're in right you know i mean you're, yeah absolutely. you know your business your and we talk about toys versus comics in the other video too you guys should check it out it's a, it's a good video but, uh, there's questions because of what dc pulled with this distribution there's only two weeks worth of books that they were able to distribute yeah. So a lot of accounts are a lot of oh you're gonna get everything we are but what's gonna happen because there's only two weeks they're gonna diamonds gonna stagger them. This is an interesting turn too because there are a lot of titles that don't sell. So you're gonna have Marvel has a few titles. Unfortunately, they stop the print. They're only gonna be available digitally. Yeah. And if you want the print, you'd have to buy the trade paperback. Avengers of the Wastelands is one of them. Um, Runaways. There's a few titles, but again, you look at those titles. The numbers on those titles were so bad. Right. That this is a good. I I personally think this break was was amazing. It's gonna be staggered, but we're getting everything that Midtown and Lunar distributed. We're gonna get all every store, every diamond account is gonna get those books. And that's gonna do it for us, folks. You know the drill. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Ring the bell if you already are a cat. Take and again. Us away. Fresh start, guys. Fresh start. This Wednesday, May This 20th. Wednesday, fresh start. Support your local comic book store. Doesn't matter where he is, support your brick and mortar. If it wasn't for brick and mortar, we wouldn't have the stuff. Now more Guaranteed. Than Guaranteed. We'll see you next time. Peace.